Welcome everyone. I am so glad to have you here today. We are going to be jumping into an overview of the Pro Writing Aid product and um, and then go into a demo of the product and then talk about questions. So this session is all about basically an introduction to the Pro Writing Aid premium product, how to use it, how to get started with it, and we'll just go ahead and dive in. Uh, so as I mentioned, what we'll cover today are how to upload a document, um, all the kind of basics, so how to upload your document, how to use our real-time reports, how to look at some other individual reports like summary and, um, and uh, some of my favorite kind of fiction writing reports. Uh, we also have uh, a place to, oh, sorry, I'm just looking at some of our questions. Um, Considering a pub, I'm not quite sure what a pub site domain is. So Vivian, that might be a question for a different webinar, um, but I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, so we'll go through some of the other uh, reports that I really enjoy uh, writing a lot about my um, about my uh, writing writing kind of process with providing it and no worries Vivian at all. <laughs> some, it's uh, easy to get lost in the wrong Zoom. Um, we'll go through some other helpful features of ProWriting Aid, talk about the different integrations, and then go through some additional writing resources. So let's go ahead and just dive in. So this is the Pro Writing Aid web editor. Um, there are a number of ways you can kind of get text into Pro Writing Aid. So one thing that you can do is just start typing. So I can just start typing, hello, my name is Haley. And as you'll see in a second, improvements will start to pop up. There's probably nothing wrong in this particular sentence, but you can start just typing in the web editor. You can also upload a document here. So if you have a document, let's say, let's see, I don't even have any documents since I use Google Docs so often, uh, but you can upload a document in here if it is a, doc, a Word doc file. Oh, here's one. Uh, a Word doc file, you can upload CSVs, you can upload a final draft files, you can upload dozens and dozens of different types of documents in here. Uh, now, when you upload a document into ProWritingAid, you might find that your formatting looks a little bit different, which is totally okay. As long as you save and then export, your formatting will return when the um, when you are done editing. So you can upload, uh, you can upload your document here. You can uh, also type, like we just said, or you can copy and paste right into this. Now. A lot of people end up copying and pasting into their into Pro Writing Aid, but I would try to recommend not copying and pasting as much as you possibly can. Uh, copying and pasting tends to add extra characters or mess with the formatting a little bit. So if you're very concerned about keeping the integrity of your formatting, I would highly recommend uploading a document or just typing in here rather than copying and pasting. That can cause things to get a little bit wonky. Um, and I'm going to just go with a sample text now. So again, there's kind of three ways to get text in. You can just start typing and writing here in the web editor. You can copy and paste text here from some, somewhere else, though again, be careful um, to look for formatting if you are coming to copy and paste, or you can upload a document of your choice into the web editor. Uh, but I am going to work with a sample. So I now have a sample text here, and you can see that I have a number of different up, uh, underlines coming down, and I also have some information here on the right-hand side. So the first thing I want you to recognize is that there are a number of different panels here in Pro Writing Aid. So on the left-hand side, I have my documents, and I can expand or collapse this at any point, which makes it really easy to expand the window if you want a little bit more space. And then we have a goals sidebar here on the right hand side. Similarly to the documents, you can expand or collapse this at any time. Um, and before we move further, I've seen that a couple people have put in the chat uh, some things that they would like to see. If you could do me a favor and please drop those into the Q&A, which is in the bottom uh, middle of your screen, that will help me keep track of those. Uh, so in case the chat is moving too quickly, I can make sure to get to as many questions as possible. Um, so Judy and Jeff, I know you've asked some questions about Scrivener, about how the tools in ProWriting Aid can help. Um, if you can just go ahead and put those, pop those into the Q&A, I will be happy to answer that. And Terry, same thing. Um, please go ahead and pop that into the Q&A and I'm more than happy to answer as we get to questions at the end. Okay, so with my sample text here, again, all of these, um, all of these documents I can expand or all of these sidebars I can expand 
or I can unexpand. And same thing with the reports. I can um, expand the reports up here. I can also pin this sidebar, so, or excuse me, pin this toolbar so it stays, or I can collapse it, or then I can again pin it and open it again. So all of these different sidebars, you can kind of have whatever you would like open uh, or closed, depending on what's easiest for you. So that's the first thing, because I know sometimes people say, oh, you know, my side by hers disappeared, or I don't, I don't have enough, I can't see enough. Again, all of these things can expand or contract. Okay, so once you have your document, and again, I'm working with a sample text, you'll see some edits start to populate in real time. So real time edits relate to style, spelling, grammar, and passive voice. Now, if we hover over real time here, we can turn those edits on and off. Um, so if I turn those off, then I don't see anything and I can just start to write. And then if I want to start to edit, I can turn real time back on and again, see style, spelling, passive voice, and grammar. The basic functionality of any of these suggestions is that you can hover over the suggestion, you can click on the suggestion to accept it, or you could click to ignore a suggestion, disable a rule if you do not want to see this rule anymore, or if the suggestion doesn't make sense, which happens every now and then, you can always also report it as incorrect, which will help our, um, our development team make sure that they <laughs> optimize that rule a little bit more. Uh, but again, basically, if you see a, uh, a suggestion in the text, hover over it, uh, click to accept it, and then you can keep moving. Now, one of the questions that people get, uh, or that we get a lot, is what the colors in each report uh, mean. And basically, I would say that the colors correspond to different things in different reports. So it's not like all orange um, are always related to readability or style. It just depends on the different report you're in. This helps you see the type of suggestion within this particular report. So orange suggestions in real time relate to style. Uh, red suggestions relate to spelling. Blue relates to grammar. And purple relates to passive voice. But overall, you don't need to worry too much about the color coding. I typically work through the suggestions um, within my document and then and within what the panels tell me. And then again, you don't need to worry too much about a code for anything with the um, with the colors of the suggestions. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at what a suggestion panel looks like. So as I mentioned, you can come in here and you can see the suggestion itself and you can decide to either click to accept it. You could also disable this rule or you could hit to ignore. Now, many of our suggestions also have this orange eye here in the corner, which you can click, which pops open an article and potentially a video that tell you more about the suggestion and why you should um, implement it. This is very helpful if there's something that you're not too sure about what it means or what it, um, what it uh, like why you why it's there. This, these, um, these articles can help you decide whether or not to implement that suggestion. One thing I always say to writers is that pro writing aid is, um, is like a, it's a writing coach, but it's not by any means something that you have to do. Many of the suggestions that you'll see in here could be accepted or could be ignored, right? It's, a, it's often up to you as the, as the writer to ultimately decide whether or not to accept or ignore something. So if you're really not sure, this orange eye can help pop up information that can help you decide whether or not to make a particular decision. Okay, so uh, that's our real-time checker. Again, this gives edits in real time as you're writing. All of our other reports, you have to press to run. So once you have the real time on as you're writing, it's just going to keep editing every single piece of text that you put in there. If you turn it off, then you don't see those edits anymore. Uh, and again, all of the other reports are reports that you have to press to run. So you start with, um, start with the real time, then you can press to run any of the others. Now, the other uh, piece of information that you can see kind of in real time is our goals sidebar here on the right hand side. And this is where I really like to start when I am beginning an editing session. So our goals panel gives information on all of the important categories for a specific genre of writing. What's great about this is we have dozens of different genres that you can choose from. So this sample is a fiction sample. So I can come in here and select general fiction. And the goals that I see are different than the goals that I saw when it was selected as academic. So you can see in here now that I have goals related to emotion tells, related to pacing, dialogue tags, whereas if we go back to academic, when it was academic essay, 
Then I had goals related to transition usage and power verbs um, and complex paragraphs. Again, very, very different than what a fiction document is. So for every single thing that you're writing in ProWritingAid, and if you're like me and you go back and forth between lots of different types of documents, you could always select your document type and get custom suggestions for what to improve. Now, each of the goals in this sidebar represents an important area uh, of potential improvements for your work. And the way to kind of read these is that each goal has a suggested band and a suggested score. If you hover over, you can see what the suggested score is for your particular document type. So these will change a little bit depending on the document type you're working on. So, uh, you know, an academic essay might have a longer sentence, average sentence length than a creative document will. So this, the, um, the banded ranges change. So these are the banded kind of ranges for your documents. And then these are the tick marks that show you whether you are inside the average banded range or if you're a bit outside of it. And this is kind of how I come in and know exactly where I want to start. Um, I will come in, I will have the real-time report on when I'm ready to edit. I'll go through some of those high level edits, but then I'll come right over here to the goal sidebar and I'll take note of where I am in the panel, where I'm in the green and where I am a little bit outside of the panels uh, or of the recommended panels um, score. And when I have that, that kind of gives me an, a good instinct of where I should go to start writing right away. So for instance, uh, this document is very outside the recommended uh, ranges for dialogue tags. So that tells me that this could be a place where I want to spend some time focusing during this editing session. So again, you can kind of come through and look at exactly where you want to go uh, and which, which places have the most potential improvements for your document type. Now, once you've decided what you want to focus on, you can simply click that specific report's name and it will pull up all of the suggestions related to that report. So you can see here we have some on passive voice, some on hidden verbs, some on readability enhancements, et cetera, emotion tells. Again, this tells me exactly what I need to do and uh, to improve that particular score. I can always have a, um, I can always close that out and, uh, and uh, turn off the real-time report if I do not want to see it. Uh, and Jeff says that those marks are always presenting a challenge. <laughs> um, yeah, that gets accepted every single time. It's definitely hard to see um, a program like this and, and not want to have a 100%. But one of the things I always point out to people is that these are all ranges. Um, so every single thing should be arranged. For, and you might ask like, well, why is there you know, a grammar or spelling, a, a situation where grammar or spelling wouldn't be at 100? And it could be that your characters are not speaking with proper grammar. So that would make sure, make your document not have 100% perfect grammar. So in every situation, there's going to be a range. Um, and even if you are outside of the range, in many instances, that is okay. Uh, this range is here to show you kind of what the um, what the typical range is for documents in your specific genre. But again, that's a range. There's always going to be outliers both above a range or below it. So um, try not to uh, <laughs> try not to take it too too seriously. But it is really really great information uh, to understand about kind of how your document measures up to other documents in that type. Okay, so uh, we've covered the kind of the goal sidebar. Again, whenever you're ready to focus on a specific report, you can simply click it and it will open up the corresponding report. So now I'm going to show you a few of my other favorite reports before we keep going. Um, so I write a ton for work, uh, for working at ProWritingAid. I work on our blog and a lot of our content. Uh, and for that work, I will typically tend to use our sticky sentences check. So our sticky sentences check um, looks for sentences that are sticky or semi-sticky. These are sentences that have a lot of extra words in them. They're not technically grammatically incorrect, but they're saying something in a much more complicated way with many more words than it actually needs. So I come in here and I look for places where I have too many words. Um, and then this check will tell me what my glue words are. So what the words are that are kind of extraneous that I can reduce, remove, or replace to make the sentence more effective. So I'll come in here because when I'm writing for web, I want to make sure it's as clear as possible. I'll also tend to look at our readability uh, when I'm writing for web, because again, if you're writing for a mass audience, you typically want it to be easier to read. Uh, and then if I'm coming in and looking at fiction, I spend a lot of time in my dialogue tags report. Uh, so I come in and I look at my unusual versus uh, 
typical dialogue tags, as well as how many times I've used dialogue tags with adverbs, which can be an indication that you've done a lot of um, a lot of telling rather than showing. So if you say screamed angrily, it's typically an indication that either you're being redundant and it's very clear that your character is already angry, or uh, you might need to do a better job of showing the reader that they're angry rather than telling them. So I come in and use the dialogue tags report a lot. And then my other favorite reports are my repeats reports here. So these come in and they tell you all of the frequent phrases that you have in your document. So repeats tells frequent four, three, two, and one word phrases, whereas echoes um, tells you kind of how close together they are. Uh, so when you have close repeats. Um, so this is one of my biggest bad habits as a writer. I tend to get something stuck in my head and then just say it over and over again. So I come in with the echoes and repeats check to just find all those places where I've used the word turquoise to describe someone um, a thousand times, <laughs> turquoise eyes a thousand times. Um, so this is really, really helpful for me, particularly again, when I'm writing fiction or even if I'm writing a longer blog post to find where I've just repeated myself and said a bunch of stuff um, that could be more effective. Uh, so yes, re repeats tells you kind of all of the frequent repeated phrases, whereas echoes tells you how close together they are. So that is uh, very, very helpful to understand. Again, you know, it's not necessarily bad to use turquoise many times in your writing, but it could be improved if you're using it every other sentence, which is kind of how echoes comes in. Um, a couple other features that I really love, let's see. I love the word explorer. So if you cl double click on any word, um, let's see, that's not correct. Uh, so I will report that to our team. Let's see. Um, I'm just trying to find one. Um, let's do stunned. Okay. So if you double click on any word, you will see first a thesaurus of um, other words that you could use in, uh, for that. And then if you click here onto Word Explorer, you will be taken into a bunch of different information about that word. So you'll first get definitions of the word. You'll also get a reverse dictionary definition of the word. You will also get thesaurus, a contextual thesaurus. You'll get common uh, alliteration with that word. You will get um, similar spellings or other related spellings. You'll have rhymes <laughs> that start with that word or end with that word. Um, you will have collocations, so adjectives that you can use before, adjectives you can use after, nouns, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also find common uh, two word, three word, four word, five word phrases using that phrase, as well as anagrams and examples. So there's just tons of information on all words. And to get that, again, you just click any, any word. So double click any single word in your document and then hit Word Explorer down here. So I'm just double clicking any word. Um, and it will either first give you the thesaurus and then you can open up the word explorer to get more information. So some of these don't have easy synonyms, uh, but again, uh, if you open up the word explorer, you'll get more information about them. So any word within here, you'll find either a synonym or you can come into the word explorer and learn more about it. Uh, but it's really, really useful for, uh, again, understanding kind of how how different words work, finding the uh, synonyms for them, or just finding ways to use those words really creatively. So that's one of the things that I love um, the most when using the tool. Now, a couple other quick things that you can do. So you can come into your settings to set your language. I think Jeff was saying in the chat um, that he switches between uh, American English or British English. I have to do that all the time. Um, Pro Writing Aid is a UK based company and I am American. So I often have to switch uh, and remember, you know, how to spell things with an S or an OU as opposed to a Z or just an O. So I'll come in here and switch my language to get custom suggestions for that. Uh, you can also switch the general document type here. But again, like we said, we can do that in our goals report as well. Uh, and then if you come into your app settings, you can customize a lot of the different information uh, that you have in your document. So first, you can add your company or product names if you are writing for um, a particular type of or a particular company. This can be used on our customer focus score, which is something our business writers use. 
You can also create a custom report called a combo report here. Uh, and a combo report is almost like a one-stop shop. If you don't wanna come in and run every single report, you can come into the combo report and choose your favorites. Uh, so like I said, I really love um, the sticky sentences and dialogue tags checked. So I can just check which um, reports I would like to include in the combo report. And then I'll show you where that button is when we get back. Uh, you can also add specific overused words that you would like to check for. Then you can click here to ignore specific um, corrections in dialogue, which is where a lot of those rules tend to be broken. So you could ignore diction errors or vague word errors, cliches, etc. Uh, so that way, anything that's within a quote is ignored and doesn't count to your overall score. And then you can also change the character distance on those highlighted repeats. So like I mentioned in that echo check, um, it shows uh, close repeats basically. And so you could ex expand that or contract that if you wanted. So if you wanted to be really careful that you were not echoing yourself uh, within a certain amount of time, or excuse me, a certain amount of characters, you could move this down to 100. Or if you really don't, uh, you know, if you really want uh, more, you could raise it from there. Uh, you can also under here select an author to compare your work to. So we have dozens of famous published authors in here that you can use as the basis for your author comparison. Uh, so I have Lee Bardugo, who if you have been on a webinar with me, you know that I love. <laughs> um, and then you can save these and then see them reflected back when you come to your document. So if we go back, let's, uh, oops, hold on. Ah, here we go. If we go back, uh, now, again, we have our language settings, we have our summary report, so we'll see Lee Bardogu written here. And then when we run this combo report, which is up here, it'll run all of those reports that I just checked. Um, so I can see all of them in just one place. And it'll, it might take a minute because uh, I'm running multiple reports at once, but it'll pop up over here on the left with all of the different documents, uh, excuse me, all of the different uh, reports that I just asked for. So you can see I have my repeats in here. I can have my dialogue tags. I have my sticky sentences, all those things that I really love. Okay, um, so let's talk now about integrations because I know that a bunch of people have some questions about that. So we have a bunch of different integrations um, and you can find most of them in the footer of our website if you're looking for places to install them. Uh, so first we have browser extensions. Our browser extensions basically let you write almost or use our editor kind of anywhere you want to write. So if you are, let's let me pull up a an email. <clears throat> Give me one second. So if I was writing an email here, I'm not sharing it. All right, so if I was writing an email here, the Chrome extension will let me edit right in here. And you can see that with this little dot down here. So I can say, you know, this is Haley's sample email that she loves very much. And I'll add a misspelling there. Um, so you can see the little dot down here which is going to pull up information based on what I have uh, selected here. You can see it automatically defaults to general. And then as I keep going, it will give me more information. And I can also click down here to open up the full editor if I would like. So this is how the Chrome extension works and it works across the internet. So on Twitter, on Facebook, WordPress, Wattpad, um, based Medium, uh, anywhere that you're kind of tech typing text. Uh, this is also how it works on Atticus, which I know some people have asked for. Uh, it's really helpful because again, first you can get your real-time information, but then if you click that little dot in the bottom right, you will also get access to the full editor. Uh, so we have that for Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and Edge. Uh, we also have our Google Docs add-on, which works very similarly, but specifically within Google Docs. So if you didn't want to have the suggestions all over, you just wanted to have them in Google Docs, you could install that there. We also have a Word add-in, our desktop app, um, which I will go into in more depth in just a second. So our Office add-in basically adds in directly into Microsoft Word. So you can see here um, that you'll have your typical Word layout up here, and then you'll have a, once you've installed it, you'll have a, uh, a 
a section of your toolbar called Pro Writing Aid, which gives you access to all of the different reports that you can run from there. So this allows you to get the full power of the Pro Writing Aid editor exactly in Microsoft Word. Now for Scrivener, which I know a bunch of people have asked about, Scrivener works with our desktop app. Um, and let me pull that up. So we are actually working on a native integration with Scrivener right now, and it's in beta testing, so should be released in the next few weeks. Um, but here's an example of a Scrivener file in the desktop app. So basically, um, you can see if you're familiar with Scrivener, I have all of my different folders here on the left hand side, all of the files for this particular project. I can open up and access any of these. This is just a sample uh, Scrivener file. But when I'm ready to edit, I just open the .scriv file in Pro Writing Aid. I make whatever changes I want. Hello. Then I save. And when I reopen in Scrivener, all of the changes that I've made have, uh, have been implemented. So right now, with the desktop app, you just open a Scrivener document, you make all your changes, hit save, and then reopen it in Scrivener, and they uh, appear. But like I mentioned, we are like just weeks away <laughs> from, from releasing a version of the native app so that you get exactly what I just showed you for Microsoft Word in Scrivener itself. So very, very soon um, we will have that capability, which I am incredibly excited about uh, because it's going to make it just so much easier to get all of the power of providing aid right in that one place. Um, so very, very exciting. Uh, and keep an eye on your email because we are looking for beta testers for those features. We're beta testing Windows right now, and we will be beta testing the PC, uh, the Mac version in, uh, shortly. Uh, so keep an eye out because we, uh, for our, in our Facebook groups and on our email, because we're always um, asking folks for, you know, if they want to get access to the features early to check it out that way. Um, okay. So a couple other quick things just before we get into questions. Um, a few other resources that we have, if you have a Pro Writing Aid premium license, you get access to all of our eBooks. We have, I think, 12 or 13 different eBooks here on everything from how to write a strong email, to how to use Pro Writing in the, in the classroom, to how to build great characters. Uh, and these are all just included in your premium license. So you can just come here and download and you'll get a copy of the book right away. Uh, and then we also have Dozens of webinars going on. Um, we are about to announce Crime Writers Week. So if anyone's a crime writer, uh, that will be happening in June. And we are just, yeah, very excited, <laughs> very excited to get that. So please keep an eye on our webinars announcement as well. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go into some questions. Um, okay, so somebody asked about the Atticus integration. Anything special to note there? So the Atticus is going to work with our Chrome extension. So same thing. It's going to be very, very similar. Um, you can press that little dot to open up. You'll get the suggestions right in Atticus, and then you'll also press the little dot to open up and see if you have any questions for that. But please send us feedback on how it's working with Atticus. This partnership is brand new, um, and so we're still very much in the testing phase. And if you see any bugs or anything like that, please let us know. Um, okay, uh, so that was Atticus. We talked about Scrivener. Uh, yes, so uh, someone says, I use a Mac not a, or a PC, not a Mac. Is author style available to me? Yes, every it's available to everyone. Uh, you can access it in the web editor here by going to app settings, and that will pull up the author. Um, okay, so Big Words asked, I heard it's better to not upload an entire book manuscript, but to work on it in parts. Is that true? Yes, uh, it is true, and it's true for a couple different reasons. Um, one, you're just never going to upload your, <laughs> you're not, you're never going to edit your entire book in one sitting. Uh, if you did, I would be very concerned for you, and I would want you to take a break. Um, you know, just as long as it took you to wrote the, the, write the book, you're going to have to take that long to edit, if not a bit longer sometimes, uh, depending on your editing phase. So there's a couple different options for this. One, if you have your document formatted with headings for chapters, you could upload it and then you'll have um, almost like a headings uh, or chapter bar over here on the left, which will show you your chapters. So you can go chapter by chapter. Again, you'll need to format your Word document with or the document that you're using with heading uh, with like an H2 with a heading for each of the chapters so that the software can read it. Um, or you could, uh, you know, something like Scrivener often has you writing in multiple documents anyway, or you could also just copy and paste in uh, the pieces that you wanted to. So you could copy one chapter and paste it in here and then paste it back. 
Um, or you could use an integration. So if you're writing in Word, I would just recommend using the Word integration so that you don't even have to move the document anywhere. It's just right there. Uh, but it kind of depends on your file type. But there's a bunch of different options. Um, and moving on from that, we've had a couple questions about the limits. There is no limit of the size of document. However, if it's over about 15,000 words, it's going to start to get very slow because these reports are incredibly in-depth. Um, it's just going to take a long time. So I would recommend typically working at about a chapter at a time. Um, so someone says, I've had it suggest a change where for were and where when I'm using the correct word. So if there's ever any change like that or ever anything that doesn't make sense, um, it's really helpful for us if you can uh, hit report incorrect. That sends a bug to our developers so they can look at it. Um, Judy asks, is there a way to set suggestions based on readability level? So all, I'm not quite sure what you mean, Judy, uh, but all of our document types have a specific readability range. So you can see if you're in the right readability for that, um, for that particular document type, and that will change. So we do have uh, uh, suggestions like kids uh, or categories like kids, which could help you if you're trying to go much lower uh, with the readability level. Uh, and then some of the readability suggestions in here will help you, uh, again, like it kind of improve the style and make it easier to understand. Um, somebody says, is there a nonfiction category? Yes, there's a general nonfiction here. And then there's a, a many nonfiction categories. So if you're writing academic, business, et cetera, there's a bunch of that. And then there's just overall kind of a general creative nonfiction as well. Uh, Alexander asks, can pro writing aid determine what genre an uploaded document belongs to? No, not yet. <laughs> um, we, you, you will tell it. Um, okay, so Marlene says, I've found the samples used on the training sessions, the paragraphs to be quite long. I make my paragraphs using only one or two sentences. Long paragraphs make reading harder. Um, so Marlene, I think one of the reasons is to show exactly what you're saying, which is that a lot of paragraphs are long. <laughs> um, so we have uh, checks on long, complex paragraphs and uh, long sentences as well. I completely agree with you. Long paragraphs do make reading really hard. Uh, and that's one of the things that we look for. So the readability check will find um, difficult to read uh, paragraphs, or excuse me, yeah, difficult to read or easy to read paragraphs. You'll also look, take a look at sentences. Um, and then you will also, you can also look at pacing, which will tell you the longer, uh, longer paced paragraphs as well. So all of that is really, really helpful. Uh, and this, do not take the, the sample texts are not designed to be like, this is what you should do. The sample texts are designed to have lots of things to look at to improve. Uh, so that's why we use them here, because <laughs> there's lots of things to improve. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Joe asks, any chance of a Thunderbird client integration, email client integration coming up? Not on the immediate roadmap, Joe, uh, but we do take a look at our Upvotee a lot, which you can access through a Chrome store. Um, so the, we typically look at like what most people are requesting. So if you can get a bunch of people who are asking that, let us know. <laughs> um, okay, so Judy asks, will the Scrivener integration be a free upgrade? Uh, if you have premium, it's included in premium. So all of our integrations are all um, in premium. And if you already have premium, it's just going to be included in that uh, no matter what. So you don't have to pay any extra for it. Uh, Vivian Stone asks, how private or confidential are our files? Uh, it's actually, a, Vivian says it's not a big issue for me. Yes, we are incredibly, um, incredibly safe with files. I think we have the, the kind of highest industry standard for encryption and access. Um, we take safety very, very, very seriously. Um, and we don't, nobody has access to any of your text. Uh, it's all, and we don't keep it uh, and we don't retain access to it. Um, that's something I would keep an eye out with other grammar checkers. Um, there's some other tools in the industry where if you upload your document, uh, you're actually kind of giving them rights to use your document in like their marketing materials. And we do not do that. We take that very, very seriously. Um, so your document is yours. We will never access it unless you give us explicit permission because we're trying to fix something or anything like that. Uh, and we do not retain or look at or use your materials in any other way. Um, so be very, very careful uh, with with who you <laughs> who you do business with at that, because there are other companies who do not have the same privacy concerns. 
Um, yes, we don't have any children's writing in our ebooks right now, uh, but like I mentioned, we do have this here and we are going to be doing YA Writers Week in July, I believe, and then we're going to be doing Kid Lit, I think, in December. So I hear you, <laughs> um, and we are going to we're going to have a lot of content for both YA and middle grade uh, coming up soon. I'm very excited about it. Um, okay, so somebody says, does the same comment on slowness for long documents apply in the word integration? And if so, is there a workaround? Yes, it can, depending on how long your word document is. I would just select. So one way to select or to choose what you want to run the report on is to just highlight it like this and then click the report in Word. Um, and then it'll just uh, it'll just run on the paragraphs you're, you're checking on. So that's another kind of workaround for that. Okay, let's see. Uh, say a third writer is writing a report, can you adjust the readability level for them? You can, but it's not going to go, it doesn't go down below third grade. Uh, so third grade is the lowest, uh, lowest level on our readability uh, checker. So if they were writing at like uh, 12, you know, at like, <coughs> excuse me, like a second grade level or something, it's not going to go below that. So third grade is kind of the lower end. Excuse me. Uh, the diction report, good question. So the diction report looks at vague and abstract words uh, and ways that you can improve your diction. Um, this is really helpful if you are like just not giving a very, very specific, um, a specific answer. A lot of times we are, we tend to be vague. So an example I give in the clarity webinar is something like, oh, I made some improvements to my house. It's like, well, what does some improvements mean? <laughs> some improvements could mean absolutely anything. Uh, so the diction check will help find things like that where you've just been kind of unnecessarily vague uh, and potentially confusing. Okay, Alexander asks, are the web and app versions the same? Yes, Alexander, they are. Um, they uh, present the information in slightly different formats, but you can always open the full editor um, no matter where. Okay, so Jeff asks, I would like to know the tools uh, in providing aid that can be used to describe characters and color envi colorful environments. This is great. So I think the diction check, which we just asked for, is a good way of finding places where you've used something vague and you could be more specific. Uh, the word explorer that I talked about before was, is a great way. I think somebody had said before that um, they could use the word explorer for echoes. It's a great way of just expanding your vocabulary and finding new things to take, take a look at. I also use the sensory check, which looks at the different types of senses that you've used in your document. So if you're writing a fiction uh, novel and really want to create an immersive world, coming in here and finding the, um, the appropriate descriptive words can be really, really helpful for that. Those are some of my uh, most kind of favorite uh, for fiction specifically. Um, and then the Save the Cat SEC format. I honestly don't know, Jeff. Um, if it's anything, it's the desktop app, uh, but I've never tried to use it with the um, with the Save the Cat. That's a good question. Um, try it. <laughs> try it and let me know. <laughs> I honestly don't know, um, but I hope so. That's a great one. And if not, we should take a look because I love Save the Cat. All right. Uh, and then somebody, I think the last, oh, the sensory button was here under more reports. So there's a whole bunch more here under more reports that you can pull up. Um, okay, uh, somebody said, I found that each time I close providing aid, I get a copy on the desktop and after the other edits, I get others copies. Um, so are you exporting, uh, are you exporting them? If you're exporting, so if you are exporting, that's going to create a different one every single time. If you just save, it'll be the same one. So, um, and saving as saves a new thing, whereas if you just save, so you'll save something as, let's say new document three, that gives a name to it. And then from that point forward, it just saves. So whenever you do save as, it's like creating a new thing. So make sure you're just doing save and that should fix it. Um, and then again, also that you're not exporting because that will do it as well. 
All right. Well, I think those are all of the questions that we had. So thank you all so much for joining me here today. Um, I hope that you enjoy using the tool. Um, and please, if you have any questions, uh, first of all, if you see any mistakes, please report them as incorrect so that our team can take a look. And then if you have any questions, please feel free to email hello at prowritingaid.com. And we are more than happy to help you anytime you have. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great rest of your day.